Mambo Mountain is an imaginary place. It's completely made up. I love dancing mambo. Uh, so I have sounds in my body, in my mind, that that kind of refers to. But also the idea of mountain is also uh, particular because uh, I grew up in the projects in New York on the 14th floor, and uh, which meant that I pushed a button to take the elevator up. Um, and when I think of mountain, I think of where my parents live. They grew up in the island of Puerto Rico and uh, they live on a mountain. And when I go there, the smell of soil and uh, the smell of plants is very vibrant. You know? uh, whenever I'm in a new place, for example, I remember when I first moved in here, I love to look out the window. And uh, I love being able to bring what's outside my window inside here. And so I do that through the palette, the architectural palette. So, that was the that was a way one of my first paintings, High Hole Silver, was was uh, painted. I mean, that's how the palette came. But I used another drawing to get to that space, which was based on The Simpsons. So it was completely juxtaposed, right? Um, it totally didn't make. Uh, I mean, there was nothing logical about it, other than the fact that um, I like looking out of windows and using the information. Well, I think that there is a beautiful uh, sort of um, connection to light when you're higher up. And that's what I love about this studio is that I have skylights. So there's an even light. Uh, but yes, I think that there is something very comforting in the microscopic viewpoint. And, uh, and so make this, this relation between macro and micro uh, lenses uh, are very important in my work. And so that's why I have the small bits and the big bits, right? I mean, it's what I need formally to make the paintings work, but it's also the way I, um, how I actually view. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is part of my, uh, my way of being, you know, my way of seeing is really intersects this micro, macro uh, lenses, you know, and that is from living, I think from the 14, on the 14th story. There, it's kind of magical in a way, color and a brush. I mean, it's a dumb thing, too. I mean, I often wonder why. <laughs> but I've always loved it, you know? And I can't, you know, it was started, I guess it started with those paint by numbers, you know, that I got when I was a kid or something, I don't know. But there was something about it. It was the magic of having this thing erupt that, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't name it or contain it. It, it was just, it just gives me a good feeling. You know, Chicago is really different than New York. Um, it's, you know, the networks here are a little smaller somehow. Uh, although it's a big city, you know, it's different. It's different, different. Uh, but I think that, you know, being in a, in a teaching environment has been very stimulating for me. And, um, and it keeps me really in, in it, you know, probing and together, you know, with these amazing younger, some of them younger minds, some of them older minds, you know. I mean, I think that that's been the pleasure of teaching and I never realized how much pleasure I could get out of teaching. So having said that, you know, there's, no, there's even more pleasure being able to come here and just be quiet and uh, not answer to anything uh, and not really care about anything. You know, there is something about uh, giving oneself the permission to, to sort of, you know, be in this world that is completely um, mine.